Yo, what's going on, homies? It's your boy Stumped back for the OPTC video, and in today's video, we're updating the PvP tier list and breaking down what are the best units in the PvP game mode. Now, in today's video, we are updating the tier list that I did way back when for the 10th anniversary. Since the One Piece Day celebration, we've had a huge shakeup to the meta. Better teams have come out. The best team in the game has completely changed, and the top three are very different to what they were literally three months ago, which is kind of crazy. But in today's video, we're going to be breaking down each particular character, updating the tier list, adding new characters, and moving some characters around where I think necessary. I do want to make point that this is just my personal opinion playing the PvP game mode. I'm a huge fan of Pirate Rumble, and um, I do play it quite a bit. So hopefully, uh, my insights and my knowledge on the game mode helps you guys out. But if you guys disagree with me, if you guys have some more knowledge, let me know in the comment section below. I love talking about this kind of stuff and obviously learning from you guys as well as hopefully you guys learning something from me. But if you enjoyed the video, bell the like button, hit the subscribe button, do all that good stuff. With that said, let's dive into the PvP tier list for the One Piece Day celebration, October, or well, we're still in September, September 2024. All right, so if you want to head down to the description, you guys can click on the link, check out the tier list, and it'll bring you basically to the end of this particular page. But if you want to understand why I'm putting particular characters in particular tiers, moving them around, then I would hang around for the video. I'll try to put timestamps where uh, I can for the new characters and stuff like that. Now, as you can see, we have my top 10 at the top here. As of the end of the 10th anniversary, this is my top 10. This is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all added 10. And then as you make your way into these next tiers, these are in no particular order. Only the top 10 is in particular order. Anything else, it's kind of just like, they've all just kind of chucked in, and they're all kind of this, around the same tier. Below top 10, we've got the Godly tier. Then we've got Amazing. Like, obviously, Amazing is just, just under Godly. Um, then we've got Grand Party Monster. Obviously, Grand Party is a very prevalent game mode when it comes to PvP, and these particular characters are mostly characters that are used in Grand Party rather than the actual PvP game mode. But look, we're going to be talking mainly about PvP, if anything. Because obviously there's a huge overlap. Next, you've got the Great Tier. Obviously, these characters aren't as good as the ones above them. Terrific with Advantage. This this part here means that if you're versing the, the opposite type. So obviously, like, Psy beats Int, Int beats Psy, Dex beats Quick, and vice versa. Strength beats Dex. Like, you get the point. But these characters are pretty much just all used when you are building teams purely to, to, to counteract their direct opposite. Next, you've got Option. Like, these characters, you, you can run these characters if you really want to. But, like... There's just better options nowadays. Great unit, bad team. The, the unit seems good on paper, but look, the, the team's like kind of bad. Defensive beast. Obviously, we're focusing on offense, but I have put a tier here. Four characters that are just used as defensive monsters. Okay, I guess. is like you're kind of really dropping off now. Now I'm still bugged. And then you have um, the bad tier. So these characters here aren't really the ones you want to be looking at. Now, if we scroll back to the top here, I apologize if I haven't fixed that error with scrolling. I, I, I tried... Hopefully what I did did fix it, but if it didn't, I do apologize. Mainly what you want to be focusing on in your PvP teams is this kind of top echelons here. Obviously the top 10, then Godly, and then Amazing. As for the best teams in the game right now, um, I have Int as number one. I have Dex Shooter in particular, Dex Shooter as number two. The Powerhouse Driven Quick Team with Blackbeard as number three. Slashes in fourth, and then strength down in fifth. I believe as of three months ago, I had like strength and slashes as the top team. Decks weren't even on the radar, neither were quick, and Int was kind of on the rise a little bit. Um, thanks to uh, thanks to Luffy. So we've had a huge shakeup with the meta. I did like a um, top like meta guide for the best teams in the game and what my five top five favorite top five favorite teams are. That was hard to say. I'll leave a link to all that in the description for you guys as well. But let's take a look at the top ten. I do want to make some huge, huge, huge changes here. Like, massive changes. Like, I'm going to literally, like... We'll talk about this guy at the end, but he's going to go right down the bottom. As for number two, I do want to put S-Hawk as number two. And I'm pretty comfortable, as of right now, having Zoro as number... Uh, sorry, Luffy as number three. As for this particular Zoro, he's going to come down here as well. Shanks is definitely going to... Nah. This Shanks is still really, really good. Slashes are still really, really good. I'm still happy with, with this. As for Roger and Odin, I'm definitely going to drop them out of the top ten. Um, free Spirit. Now... Free Spirit are still a team that everybody loves. Everybody wants to run. Uh, they put a lot of investment into the nine, ninth year anniversary characters and the, and the Gear 5 celebration characters. So I understand why people still love Free Spirit. For myself, as an offensive team, it's just not there. Like, it, it, it's just not there anymore. And for that reason, these two are going to fall out of the top 10. Even in Grand Party nowadays, like this guy, 
He's not what he once was. Um, teams have a lot more bulk. They've done everything they can to counteract him. This guy running around, it's like, it's pretty much Jova. I still think Strength Luffy holds the cake as the best PvP legend at the moment. We'll, we'll talk about some other options in a second. But this guy here, like, he's just, he rocks. He rocks worlds, man. Like, he, if you get hit by this guy, like, it's, it's fucking scary. Um, as for the godly tier, this Zoro, I grossly overestimated this Zoro. Like, it's not that he's bad. It's just that, like... He doesn't... He's not needed on the next team. Like, he's not needed at all. Like, it's it's crazy that he's not even needed on the next team. Um, other characters in Godly. Ace is fantastic. I'm probably going to, like, arguably move Ace up into top 10. So, I'm going to put him up here for now. But we will have a look at what the other characters look like. He's that good that I would I would make an argument to put him up there. Obviously, Naomi Karina. One of the most annoying characters in the game. I don't think he's a top 10 unit. But for, like, defensive teams, absolute monster. The strength lineup for like Kaido, Ace, Jack, like they're also very, very good units. Shiryu, I'm going to bring down nowadays because with the quick team, you don't really want to be run the quick driven slasher. You, you do want to run quick driven, but like you don't really need that driven slash tag. You can do it still, and that's what makes him amazing, but you don't really need it as much as you once did. Like these two characters still are very, very good on both teams, uh, no matter what you run, but this Kaido definitely got a resurgence. He's very, very good. Kobe is fantastic on strength. He definitely needs to stay here. Lore, I'm going to drop down to amazing. I've definitely stopped really running Lore as much. I have been running uh, Sanji just in my strength lineup. So I'm going to bring Sanji up into to amazing. I don't think Sanji is godly, but like he makes this guy godly. So that's what the big upside to him actually is. As for other characters up here in God, the godly tier... Um, Doflamingo is falling quite a bit. Like, you just don't really have room for him on the bench with the new and improved Dex team. You can still run him, don't get me wrong, but, like, he's definitely falling off. I'm gonna bring Kuma up. Kuma's absolutely insane on the bench. I believe we have the 20-cost update as of last time, so, like, Kuma, he just... He's a great option on strength teams, on shooter teams, which have had a massive increase in the last couple months. So, definitely want to bring him up. As for Odin and Kdad, I'm gonna bring Odin and Kdad down. I think they have lost a lot of, um... A lot of prowess on the slasher team. They have had a bit more of a rise on the strength slasher team, but like slashers have just had some crazy buffs. One character that I do want to bring up is um, Cracker. Cracker's definitely just moved, made his way into my slasher team over something like Odin. The damage difference is is like is pretty big, but like Cracker's CD reduction with like these guys going nuts is um is very very strong. As for other characters, I want to bring Luffy Yamato down. They're great, but again, free spurs have definitely fallen off. Um, the Slasher Brooks, great. Uh, Odin. I mean, Odin down to Amazing as well. I know a lot of people still run Odin like crazy. I don't anymore on my side team. Same with Rebecca Toy Soldier. Um, doesn't mean they're not great units to have, but um, I definitely don't think they're like the must use on site anymore. And we'll definitely talk about characters that are uh, because like, yeah, they just kind of have fallen off a little bit. As for a character that's definitely seen a resurgence when it comes to the side build, um, we definitely want to talk about... Um, Sanji, I definitely underrated Sanji. I didn't really have a chance to use Sanji, don't get me wrong. Um, very, very powerful Psy unit. Not only when you're resting in, he's just a great addition um, on Psy teams. Yamato definitely got a resurgence with her level limit break. And obviously with like Psy strikers being a bit more of a thing. Again, we'll talk about that once Law pops up. But um, she definitely got a very, very nice buff. And Enel, where's Enel, man? Where did I put good old Enaru? Um... Where is he? He can't be down this far, surely. Oh, I found him. There he is. He's in great. Let's, let, let's get this guy up here. He's definitely um, going to be moved up into amazing. I don't think he's like a must run on the front lines, but like he's definitely a big big time player. Um, pretty much everyone got given the side team as well, like Enel, um, Kuzan. I believe they threw Odin in there, Rebecca Toy Soldier. So like they're very, very good units. I like to run Enel in the front, but like he's definitely seen a resurgence with the, with the side team and that 20 cost update. As for other great options, um, Luchi has to come up. Luchi's godly, man. Luchi's so good. Like, if you're versing quick teams especially, Luchi absolutely decimates teams. Upside to Luchi is that he is a shooter as well as a powerhouse character, which means Pell goes to the moon. Pell got his level limit break too. Still godly. Absolutely incredible unit. Um, but this guy here being powerhouse gets the CD reduction. And then the shooter's tag for Frankie, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, definitely a godly unit. As for S-Shark, he's definitely just become more of a bench option for that team. Definitely something that has fallen off. Atlas is still godly, but not one that you're sort of running. 
as much anymore. She's probably on the cusp of moving out, if I'm honest. Uh, and Blue Gem... Look, Blue Gem's still great on, as a bench unit, depending on where you want to run him. Other amazing characters we've got here. Um, Brogy Dory, they're definitely going to go up. Where are you? They're definitely going to move up. Absolutely godly with their limit break expansions and their level limit breaks. Very, very great bench options. Very, very powerful. Um, terrific slash options for um, S-Hawk and whatnot. With the new Shanks and stuff like that, they work very, very nicely as well. Um, what else have we got down here? Great options. Anyone seen a resurgence? I'm going to bring um, Uta up into Amazing just with the resurgence of Shooters. Shooters have gone to the goddamn moon. Um, so I do really enjoy that. As for, I believe Garp is down here somewhere. Garp was an option. But Garp is now amazing purely because of Ace. Um, normally, you would run Luffy wherever I've put Luffy. This guy here. Um, but with Luffy Kaido nowadays, it's very hard to do that with Ace. So, this guy definitely makes um, a very nice addition to that particular team. Same with like Sabo characters and stuff like that as well. Um, any characters in great that probably need to move down or need to move up? Um, this, yeah, this, this um, Law Beppo... Definitely just an option when it comes to um, Slasher or Cerebral-based teams. Same with Shanks. Honestly, Shanks is kind of just an option. Utah has definitely fallen off for the Cerebral team as well. Ace is okay for shooter teams. Um, same with Fujikazaru. The Slasher Free Spirit meta for um, these two characters, they're, they're pretty much just options now. Carrot Wanda and Odin and Toki. Um, Shanks can be a very good bench option, but nothing really more than that. Uh, Kazaru, honestly, nowadays is pretty much just an option. Because you have, like, Odin and, um, Cracker 6 Plus, you're really not going to be running, um, Kazaru at all anymore. Uh, which is kind of sad, but it is what it is. As for everyone else here, um, uh, Kazaru's probably, probably just on the cusp. Just because Shooters are really, really good too, and, like, they're, he's a great CD option for Shooters. So, I definitely will give him some love and leave him up there. Um... Defensive Beast. I'm going to bring Otama down to Defensive Beast. And I'm going to bring Raiju up into Defensive Beast. These characters, um, I have, like, fought on defensive builds. And they can be very, very frustrating to take down. Very, very annoying characters. Definitely, definitely annoying. Um, as for Usopp, Yasop, I'm going to bring them up to Option. Just because, again, uh, they could definitely go here in great, actually. Just because, shoot again, Shooters are getting a bit of a rise. Uh, with stuff like Frankie and um, the new Verse Kid. Um, where is Luffy? Where's Red Rock Luffy at? He's definitely become very, very good. I'm going to move him up into great. Um, I actually really enjoy utilizing um, this guy on a quick team, but there definitely has been some more replacements. As for Orochi, he's probably just an option, more of a bench option nowadays for driven uh, powerhouse characters. And then Donjin Jiao, yeah, he can definitely stay here, 100%. Definitely, de he can definitely stay here. Uh, I'm going to move this lore into Grand Party Monster, um, just because obviously if you have two laws, you can do some pretty fun stuff. We'll talk about that once we get there. It's very similar to this situation here. And um, yeah, I think that's probably all the team changes that I want to make for the, to the tier list right now. Um, we will have some obviously new additions to the tier list that may or may not creep into the top 10. I don't exactly know how I'm feeling about it just yet. As for right now, we have two, four, six, eight. So we have two extra spots. So we might be able to do some fun stuff there. So let's scroll all the way down again. Apologies if that, um, whoop. If that uh, goes all buggy for you. Now, there was a character that I completely glossed over last time. And that's Pudding 6+. Plus. Um, I don't know where she ended up on the tier list. But she ended up down here. So, Pudding 6+, plus with the Resurgence of Int. Pretty good time that I actually missed her. Is pretty much godly, man. Like, she's she's so good on the Int team. She gets 40% cooldowns. Uh, and she's a Cerebral character. If you want to do some fun stuff with, like, the Atlas comp. Um, very, very good unit in Grand Party as well. Absolutely, absolutely disgusting things, like I said. Giving 40% cooldown to these types of characters can send your teams to the moon. Um, I don't, I prefer Bonnie over her on the in team, but I do see people running her instead of Bonnie because they'd rather have the cooldown for themselves rather than the cooldown reduction for the op opposite team. So that's pretty much the upside to running Pudding is you are going to get more cooldown. As of the last tier list, though, Gin was the first character to come out. Gin came out just after Sanji, and this guy is an absolute demon when you're taking on uh, int base teams. If you run like Wano Law, this Gin, and then Sanji against majority of powers house driven int base teams, which is kind of what the, the combat sort of moved to, at least having five powerhouse characters for, for big old Blackbeard. But like Gin and Sanji just tear through their lineup. Like you get so much CD reduction, 
You have so much nerfing capabilities. You can slow the team down with one or law. Very, very good character when you are versing Int. But not only when you're versing Int, he's a phenomenal unit. Like, he is absolutely amazing in the front lines of Psy. Like, I wouldn't use him all the time as a front runner for the Psy team. But, like, if you see, like, take Slashes, for example, and they've got S Hawk in the front lines, Gin, and then you combine that with, like, this, the cooldown reduction of uh, Enel, you are basically going to stop this guy in his tracks. And with that, you just melt him before he has a chance to go. And that's what makes the Gin Sanji combination. Very, very strong. Plus, um, he's a striker character, and obviously Sai have been moving more towards the striker setups. Um, so you can do some really, really fun stuff with um, these two characters, and then they have a bunch of other 20-cost um, units to make like these characters shine on the bench, like uh, Shanks um, and Gear 5. As for the next character, we had um, the free-to-play Mihawk came out not long after Gin. Now, this Mihawk, he's okay. Like He's a 20-cost unit. You definitely can run him. Um, he's more of an option, kind of like these characters. Decks aren't really in a position where they need slashes or free spirits, so he's not exactly there yet. Um, but again, any 20 cost unit, I definitely want to put in this tier list, because like, they're definitely a character that you can use. As for Kazuna Chopper, Kazuna Chopper, the Memories of the Strike Chopper, um, came out not long after that, and he's a very, very good unit. Very, very good. He's kind of like Bonnie and Pudding combined. But really only works when you're versing free spirit or uh, striker based enemies. He does like a bunch of cooldown reduction. He does a bunch of CD reduction for your cerebral characters. Plus, again, he is a cerebral character that can make up the comp for Atlas as well. I don't run Chopper anymore, but when he first came out, he was very, very good. I am a big fan of utilizing him in Grand Party though, because obviously there's a lot of free spirits and strikers that run around there. Um, but I think he's more of an amazing character than one that is just like a necessity to have. I definitely think he's better than this chopper though. So I'm just going to bring this chopper down to great. I think this chopper is actually... Like, he's good. Oh, he's more like... Actually, when you verse side characters, this chopper goes absolutely crazy. So let's do something like that. But even when you're not versing like mono striker teams or mono uh, free spirit teams, this guy here just goes very, very well. Like very, very strong. I'm going to bring you down to um, terrific with advantage as well. Um, like nowadays, you're only really utilizing these two against free spirit teams. Um, but if you have Chopper and you've used him, let me know in the comment section below how you guys find him. I think he's very, very good, but, um, definitely has his other options when it comes to, um, other characters that can kind of go on that particular team and satisfy a very similar role. Next, we had, um, Psy Boa, the Psy 6 plus Boa, I believe we have her somewhere in bad. If I had to, if I had to guess, yeah, there she's right there. Um, she's bad, and honestly, her 6+, plus, it's still bad. We're not going to talk about it. We don't need to worry about it. Don't even worry. Like, you're never going to use her. She's just bad. As for Nami, um, Nami's pretty good, honestly. She's that good that I'm going to put her in great unit bad team. Strikers are just not there. They, like, they once had, like, a really, really wonky-ass team. Like, a really wonky team. But then it kind of just didn't work. Um... Didn't like now, now it just kind of doesn't work, I should say. Um, you can do some fun stuff with like the new lore, and then you got like Roger Whitebeard and Jack. Like, they have synergy now, but like, I don't know, they just can't cut it with like the top 10 best teams in the game, in my opinion. Um, this Nami, she kind of falls into the team, either on the bench or in the front line. She gives haste, she gives like 100% CD. Really fun in Grand Party, but like, she just, yeah, she's just kind of fallen off a little bit. As for um, Ben Beckman and Iron, I'm going to put them up here in um, option. Because again, shooters now have become good. <laughs> and um, they are just options on that on the shooter team. They, they, they're definitely just options. Um, anyone else in here? I'm going to bring you down. You're just like, okay. You're just, yeah, you're just okay. I, like I said, we like to do this shit on the fly, man. Like <laughs> We like to do this shit on the fly. Uh, you're just an option nowadays too. Let's be, let's be real. Like You're just an option. Um, let's go back down to the actual tier list, and let's talk about Robin. Robin, uh, Robin is nowhere near as good as, uh, Nami, in my opinion. She can go on the side team, or she can go on the Cerebral team, which is great. Um, but she does, like, a massive HP cut, and that's kind of all she does. Kind of okay, I guess. Um, but for myself, I'm not really running her that much. I guess she's probably an option. Uh, but to me, she's just okay, I guess. Every time I verse her in that, like, in the PvP challenge fight, I just absolutely melt her. Like, and her HP cut puts my units in better positions to get extra effects when they're at low HP. So, I don't know. She's just not not amazing. As for the character that came out for the PvP side of things when she released, we have Saul. Saul is godly, man. Saul is so fucking good. If he gets below 6% HP, he does a 
a hit that goes through defense. He has a counter mechanic and a provoke, just like this particular Zoro does, just like this particular S Shark does. But because when you get below 60% HP, he does so much damage, he's ridiculous. Like, he's so damn good. And he's exactly what Sai really needed to sort of move them away from that free spirit makeup and move into a bit of an era where Sai can compete again. Because of this, Sai like six, in my opinion, but um, still not top five, but definitely knocking on the door. And Saul is a big reason for that. He buffs either Cerebral or he buffs Psy units, so you can run him either on a Mono Psy team, or you can run him on a Mono Cerebral team, and he's going to work perfectly as your defensive bulk. You can, he works great as a middle-based unit, which is exactly what every team needs, and he's basically a staple for both of those teams. So, very, very good unit, does a lot of damage. The downside is, obviously, he needs to get hit, which is a terrible mechanic, honestly. It's, it's probably the worst mechanic in PvP, having to get hit, but you can manipulate this, like I said, you put him in the middle, and most of the attacks are going to come his way, and then he can reflect that damage. Again, a bit more RNG when the damage will get reflected, but at the end of the day, that extra shot, it's just a cherry on top of everything else that he's doing, so very, very powerful unit, absolutely incredible. Um, moving on down to the list again, we have Usopp. Master Usopp was a treasure map legend, and I believe he came out... When did Usopp come out? Did Usopp, Usopp must have come out like before Nami and um, and Robin. Usopp's insane. Like Usopp is so good. And Usopp is one of the reasons that Dex is now so amazing. Dex shooters are phenomenal. They are an absolute masterclass of a team. With the addition of this particular Usopp, the level limit break of Pell, you had the 6 plus of Luchi and the level limit break. And then we have, like, the release of Kaido and Frankie, which we'll talk about soon. But this guy is basically just a mini Blackbeard. Um, he does damage over time, level 4, which can be good damage. But the real upside to the character is he, roll backs, he rolls back specials, and he has the ability to reduce CD reduction. Now, he does want to have another Straw Hat on the team, I believe. I don't know if you need a Luffy. I believe, I believe it's just another Straw Hat on the team to get, like, all of his passive. But the fact that he slows down enemy teams can really shake up the, the, the timing of their specials. And it can just kind of crumble teams. On defensive builds, he's absolutely wild. He's so good. But in the front lines of an offensive team, he basically helps this dex team go very, very fast. Lower defense, do a bunch of damage, and you can just send your, your character's attack stats to the, to the goddamn moon. So, very, very powerful character. Really, really good in the front lines of, def, of um, dex uh, offense. And as a defensive option as well. Very, very powerful character. Making our way down now, we have Brook, who came out to buff free spirits. He adds another revive to a team that already has two revives. But as I said with um, the dropping of these two, and even Nami Karina nowadays, um, Nami Karina obviously you can use on any team, but these two here being purely pre spirit centric, this particular Brook isn't really finding a home in the meta. Um, definitely finding a home on the free spirit team, don't get me wrong. Very, very powerful team. Um, and having an extra revive under their belt definitely makes them very, very strong. But other than that, he's a legend that's going on a team that needs rare recruits. Like, the, the Free Spirit team just needs some really good synergized PvP rare recruits. This guy can half stats. He can definitely bring another revive, which is very good. And he's ex exceptional on the Free Spirit team. But that particular team needs a little bit more help with extra characters, not just extra legends. Um, still, very, very good unit. And the character I love running on Free Spirit, man. Like... That Free Spirit team going down to 6 units isn't terrible though, because like they have so many revives. As for Wano Law 6+, plus, they went and did it! I believe last time we spoke on this tier list, um, we were talking about Wano Law, and saying when they decide to do Wano Law 6+, plus, it's fucking over, man. Like, it's actually over. And Wano Law, he's just insane! Like, he's so good! He is a Free Spirit slasher still. Um, still nerfs, driven, and powerhouse characters. Reduces their CD by level 6, and then buffs... Um, Sire character's CD by level 6. So you basically just build like a level 12 difference between something like this guy or something like this guy. And he is one of the pieces of the puzzle that can do exceptional things when you are taking on Int or versus something like Slasher Team. So Wano Law, he just does really good fixed damage, really good um, nerfing capabilities, really good strengthening capabilities, and has the ability to now remove hard stats, which if you get inflicted with can be very annoying. Uh, the Sire Team's pretty susceptible to... Half stats, nine, nine times out of ten, I'm not really running Gear 5, 6+. Plus. I can still respect what Gear 5, uh, 6 plus does, but I'm not really running him in the front lines, and he's kind of the only character that can bypass half stats. Um, so having a unit like Wano Law that can just remove it, 
makes Sai very, very good. He's the reason I don't rate uh, Verse Law, but again, we'll talk about that once we actually get there. Moving on now, we have Frankie. Ow! This guy is a monster. Insane on the Dex team. Insane on the shooter team. The downside to the character is you do need five shooters to get the most out of him. But if you want to take a quick hard look here at our Dex uh, lineup, as you can see, you already have four of your shooters right there. And then you can definitely do something like this on the bench. Uh, you can throw uh, Garp on the bench. You can throw Kizaru on the bench. You can run Esbear. You can run Kuma. You can run the new six plus of Kainu, which we'll talk about soon. And you can do some really, really fun stuff. But Frankie, he's kind of designed for the shooter team. But Dex and five shooters is very easy to do. And you can do some really, really fun things. Now, he has um, the ability to lower defense to four enemies in the first 40 seconds. And then if you have five shooters, he picks three enemies and he attacks through defense. This is a lot of damage. Plus, you have a lot of characters now that are lowering defense, and you're doing a lot of damage to. This guy here makes the other team slower, that makes Frankie go a little bit faster, but because he's a powerhouse character, he can get hit pretty hard by characters like Wano or Law. In saying that though, he's the reason, or one of the reasons I have Dex in my top two best teams in the game, and why he does exceptional things, like ridiculous things. Um, if you guys don't have him, like you still can run Big Mom, she's kind of on the cusp of falling out. Definitely gonna bring um, Kaido actually out of this godly tier. I don't really run Kaido that much on strength anymore. These are kind of my go-tos. Honestly, Big Mom's kind of probably fallen out as well. That's kind of crazy to think about, to be honest. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Probably should have moved them out of the top, out of Godly. They're still fantastic, but it's just like, you just have other options nowadays. Like, other, like really good other options. Like I said, these Dex characters are just nuts. But as for Frankie, um, he provides a lot of bulk. If you have a Straw Hat on the team, so running like these two together satisfies both their conditions, you get more attack for Frankie as well, which allows you to do more damage when you're bypassing defense. That's even better. So, I love Frankie. Look, sucks he's a treasure map character just like Usopp, but, like, he's, he's just going to be one that when you pick up and you use, like, you're going to see how powerful he is. As for Jim Belias, um, he is... He's okay. For me, he's terrific with advantage. He's designed around nerfing strength teams, and with the release of Jinbei is where strength definitely started to decline. Jinbei isn't the reason they declined, um, but it definitely was showcasing another era of... Quick teams that could can take him down. He's a powerhouse character, so he slides in on that sort of quick powerhouse team. And he's a free spirit character, so you can do some like interesting things with quick free spirit. And you could run like um uh what's the name? Where is he? Zoro. Where the fuck did Zoro go? There he is. Um you can do some fun stuff with him. I believe Frankie, the um PvP rare recruit Frankie. I don't know if I have him in defensive, but yeah, this guy here. He's very, very good, and then you can do some stuff with Red Rock Luffy or the new Verse Luffy, and you can um you can basically pick off some strength teams there. Very, very good unit. I don't have him, but I have gone up against him, and I can I have seen what he does against strength. He basically melts them. He has a bunch of special money. He can do some really, really nice things. Alongside him came Hatchan. Um, Hatchan can do work on the bench, but again, he's kind of designed to take down strength teams. So I'm going to slap him in terrific with advantage. I don't have Hatchan, so I might be like missing the mark here as like how good of a bench he is, but for me, like nine times out of 10, if I'm going to use him, it's just literally on the bench or when I am taking down um, strength teams. As for Ace, Ace is pretty much just an option. Like, look, he's just actually more or less okay, I guess. Um, again, 20 cost free spirit character is always nice. Um, he's a powerhouse character too, so you can do some fun stuff there, just like Jim Belias. As for the next batch of characters, this is where it gets juicy. And look, we're half an hour into the video, so I do apologize if this has been dragging on a little bit, but this is where it gets absolutely juicy cakes. Um, really, really nice additions to some teams here. Starting with the One Piece Dave vs. character of Kaido vs. Luffy. Now, Luffy is a quick variant, and Luffy's very, very good. I don't want to discredit what Luffy can do. Um, problem with Luffy, he doesn't really have that much synergy around him to make him as exceptionally exceptional as we need him to be. Now, you can run this kind of setup still, and still bring the slasher driven requirements that you need to satisfy the conditions. Luffy can do basically what um, Red Rock Luffy can do and what, um, what's his name? Uh, Roger Odin can do at the same time. You can give a character a 50% cooldown who is your lowest cooldowns. And then you can also um, give haste to characters as well, which is very, very valuable, very, very strong ability. Um, and basically if you have like these characters rolling back specials you got cd reduction here 
Then you have Luffy go to give cooldowns to something like Cross Guild, and then Roger Odin gives to Cross... Like, you can just continuously roll back specials. But I have found that he's not exactly the best character to use on Quick when we had the release of another character, which we're going to talk about soon. So, very, very good. I don't want to discredit what he can do, but, um, yeah, just that Quick team that he kind of rocks definitely isn't in the top echelons. As for Kaido, though, Kaido, for me, is definitely a top 10 character. I would probably have Kaido... Somewhere around around here. At, at, as of this tier list right now. Oh, uh, look. Honestly, I probably have him here. Roger, oh, Roger Wipe is actually starting to drop off, to be honest. Um, Kaido is phenomenal. Kaido has so much bulk though, and can apply so much damage. The only downside to Kaido is that he basically loses the name Luffy. So, if you're running a Kaido character, you can't run something like this Luffy, which is a huge problem for something like Ace. Now, you can still do it, because Ace can use Sabos and Garbs, but that's pretty much the only downside that I can think of with Kaido. Other than that, he's exceptional. Like, he's absolutely phenomenal. Ridiculous damage, ridiculous bulk, very, very powerful character, just finds a home on the Dex team so easily, and in Grand Party, his leader skill is cracked. Like, these two characters, honestly, he closes the gap a little bit here. And he just absolutely decimates what this guy is actually trying to do as well. So, very, very good unit in PvP. Very, very good in Grand Party as well. Absolute phenomenal character. As for the next character we're going to talk about, we have Yamato. Now, Yamato is very interesting. I want to put Yamato in my top 10 best characters. But I don't know if she actually is. I might have to, like, really have a look at this sort of top 10. Um, because Yamato on the Int team can be so... Difficult to take down, but on top of that, she can work so exceptionally well with Blackbeard. And her nerfing capabilities is phenomenal, but you don't really need her nerfing capabilities. It's more... Oh, sorry, her nerfing capabilities are the best part about her, but she also has a death hit. And you don't really need this death hit because the nerfing capabilities are so good. So I actually am going to put her in the top 10. I'm actually going to bring my boy Shanks down. I love this Shanks, man. Like, I really do. He's got a great shield. He's got great damage output. Um... Great on the Cerebral team, great on the Slasher team. He can be basically float around on any other team as well. But yeah, I think um, with the Resurgence of Dex, I think he's just got to just got to come out. Because he's quite replaceable on the Slasher team too. But at, at talk, we're talking about Yamato. Yamato can buff Cerebrals and she can buff um, in characters. Which is great when you're sort of floating in stuff like Nami Karina on something like an in team, which is scary. But she has the ability to lower attack, defense, and speed, I believe, by level 15. On top of that, she then does... 7,500 fixed damage to two units. When she dies, she comes back with one HP, auto procs her special, and does exactly what I just stated, but also insta kills a character. This works on everything that doesn't have int or cerebral or free spirit damage reduction. So, for example, if the O unit has 30% uh, int D, uh, DR, it's only going to do 70% of their max HP, which therefore isn't going to kill them. So, like, these characters can survive. But when you're versing anything else, Yamato is going to take them down. And Int is so, so good right now. Like, so, so good. I'm actually going to bring you to the back. Um, is so freaking good right now that I have to have her in the top 10. I have to. And if you're running like a crazy Int team, she has to come. Like, Int isn't the best team in the game without her. Um, but in saying that, they have other characters that they need more than, than Yamato. And, um, yeah, she's a... She's so freaking scary, man. And if you partner up with Blackbeard, like, bro, it's, it's, it's done. It's, it's freaking over. As for Momo, Kinemon, Dendro, the whole Wano sh crew, they're okay. Like, they're a great unit, but like, they're okay. Um, I don't think they're as good as what the Giants are doing, but um, like they're okay. I don't have them, so I'm not going to talk about them. Uh, they can do damage and whatnot, but they're, they're kind of whatever. Same with Whitebeard. I believe Whitebeard, he's okay as well. I think he's probably a great unit. I don't have Whitebeard. I haven't seen anyone run Whitebeard. I haven't barely first Whitebeard. Same with Momo. Same thing. You don't see them in the meta, like, <laughs> it's hard to rate them when I'm not versing them. And when I am versing them, if I do see them, I end up clapping them. So, I don't know. They just they just seem like great units. Like, it's, like, not much else really to say about them. Uh, six plus a kind of, though. Ooh, la la. The 20 cost update definitely helped uh, helped um, a kind of a lot. Um, definitely finds a way onto the shooter bench. Definitely finds a way onto the strength bench. But that's pretty much as far as he goes. Um, I don't really want to put him in godly for that reason. I think I'm going to put him down here in amazing. I don't think he's better than this Kaido. I don't think he's better than Big Mom. So I definitely don't want to put him up there in Godly. But as for like a really solid bench option on any like shooter team, dex team, strength team, quick team, he can then come in and buff them, which is really, really nice. As for that other 20 cost update, where is Kuzan? I actually, I need to bring Kuzan on, man. Like this 
Kuzan, um, the free spirit one, the Korean first Kuzan. Where you at? Um, he was probably not good. Yeah, this guy here. He was not good, but now that he's 20 costs, like, he's definitely an option. Like, he's definitely an option. Really, really good bench options. But uh, Kainu, with his level limit break as well, does a lot of damage. Does really good damage over time. Damage over time has become very, very nice. And on top of that, he does very, very good damage himself. So, you have him try him on the bench, man, because he, he works very, very nicely. as a very good strength bench option. Moving on to the big dog now. <laughs> big dog Blackbeard. Blackbeard! Blackbeard! What do I have to say about Blackbeard? Blackbeard is a meta killer, man. Like, he is actually so, so disgusting. I'm actually going to slap him up here in the top three. I want to say this is probably how I like it right now. Something like this. Maybe even like this, honestly. Yeah, I think I think like that. That's crazy. All right, talking about Blackbeard. Blackbeard's phenomenal. Blackbeard ch completely changed the meta of the, the top base best teams. Because of him alongside Yamato, and then bringing, like, this Luffy into conversation, and Nessalk into conversation too, can decimate some of the, the best teams that we've ever seen. Like, Slashers get absolutely melted. Um, cerebral teams absolutely melt. Um, who else what else to do? Powerhouse, um, fight it. I, I don't know what classes he does, but it just seems like all the good characters in the game, Blackbeard Nurse. Also note, though, Blackbeard doesn't provide any buff at all to the team. All he does is nerf the opposition, and he's that goddamn good. He can apply level 10. Yeah, level 10. Damage over time, which is like 8,000, 9,000 damage, which is crazy. He has special reverse, which is so annoying. And on top of that, if you have five powerhouse t characters, he reduces enemies' cooldowns. Then he reduces speed. He reduces defense. With these two units, you can just have like negative like 20 defense on the opposition. Your normal attacks hit for like... 4,000. This guy hits for like 20,000, and then you have forced out as well. It's kind of nuts what the team can do. It's, it's actually very, very scary. But on top of that, he actually brings the quick team into um, a much stronger position. With Blackbeard, you can run these characters here. These these four. And then, I can't remember off the top of my head who the other one is. Um, but you can do some disgusting things. Like some really, really disgusting things. You can take down strength incredibly easy. You can take down slashes really, really easy. And honestly, this comp can actually take down the black the Blackbeard in team. Because of Blackbeard and because of Yamato, I do have this in team as the number one team in the game. Which is actually ridiculous to think about. Um, now that, like, as of three months ago, that it was, like, on the rise. And now here we are talking about it as the best team in the game. Which is just absolutely nuts. So, if you guys have Blackbeard, be very, very happy. He's very, very good. Very, very good. And does some scary, scary things. His counterpart, Law, ironically wants to um, destroy Slashes. But he doesn't compared to Blackbeard. Blackbeard decimates Slashes. Like, absolutely decimates Slashes. Um, Law can do it, obviously, with the Striker uh, side based team. But, like, honestly, like, the other characters on the team are just better. Like, Jin, Shanks, Sanji, Saul... Even Yamato, like, just, just better characters than Law. Now, that's not saying that Law is bad, but I just don't think the fact that he just buffs Strikers helps him at all. On top of that, this guy is so damn good that I don't understand why anyone would run the first Law over this Law. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So, he, um, like I said, he completely cucks Slashes, reduces their cooldowns as HP cuts to the Wazoo, hits them very, very hard. But that's kind of all he really does. Um, and when you're not versing Slashes, I don't even know where he fits in. As for Esbear, another PvP legend. Very, very good character. This particular character works exceptionally on the side team and brings into um, brings into play stuff like Saul, Yamato, Shanks on the bench. And makes them move away from that free spirit echelons that Int are so good at taking them down with. So... Very, very good unit. He can force out a character. The downside to him is, is you can't run in characters on your team. But he buffs Sai, he buffs Shooters. He can fit well on both those teams. He does really good fixed damage. And he does some very, very good blow away. Exceptionally PvP legend. Not as good as S-Hawk yet. But like, if you would compare any other uh, PvP legend, he would probably be the closest to what our S-Hawk is actually trying to do. Kuzan, pretty lackluster to be honest. Um, very good on the powerhouse team. The powerhouse team is like a very, very fun, fast team. Uh, and he's definitely amazing on that team. But that's pretty much as far as he goes. Gives really good CD. Gives really, really good speed. And he can get 20% cooldowns. Luchikaku. Um, right now, honestly, I'm going to put them in bad. Like, driven fighters, they're just... They're non-existent. I'm sorry. And 
like people read this guy's kit and they were like, oh my god, this guy's gonna be so good. They're bad. Like they're, the unit's ass. Like everything about they're just ass. Go watch my video. They're ass. They're just straight up ass. Uh, finally, we've got the last part of the One Piece Day celebration, the El Battle of Elbaf. We've had, we've got the Giants first. Giants honestly are the MVP of this celebration, man. They are so good. Like they are so freaking good. If you partner them up with this sort of slasher, sort of strength slasher kit, and then you do stuff with like Kaku and Toki, these five characters absolutely decimate Dex. I, I put out a video just showcasing how good they are against Dex. Go check it out if you guys are struggling with Dex. You just run this team and it just sort of like tears through them. Plus then you can do stuff like this on the bench with um, Law. You can substitute like Rise of Shinobu in. You can run like um, these two characters on the bench here. You could bring in like a Kainu on the bench. Giants are very, very good. They're not. He's not like a meta-breaking character. You can run them over on um, Slashes as well. The only downside to them is that you need like a Shanks Donny on the team. But the ability to half defense, do a massive shot... Uh, raise attack for strength, raise attack for slashes, strength slashes obviously even level 10 attack, which is nuts. Um, they're very, very good, and they're a very, very fun character to run. I don't think they're godly. Like, I just think they're on, on par with these slasher characters here. Um, they're definitely on par with stuff like Kobe, but um, they can do some really, really fun stuff. As for Kid, um, Kid's another very, very good addition to shooters. And honestly, Kid's PvP is, like, the best part about him, in my opinion. Um... He's very good in the front lines for shooters, but for myself, I found him way better on the bench. He's damaged in the last 40 seconds is his true drawing point. But if you're running five shooter characters with Frankie, um, Esper, and then obviously you're running a shooter team with um, with Kid, you can do a lot of damage with Kid. He hits for a sideways horizontal range though, which is a bit of a problem because that can whiff. But the damage output that he has is really, really nice. He can hit three times in the last 40 seconds. You have him come in. You can do some crazy things. And there is that um, free-to-play Usopp that uh, came out for the Stampede Celebration like 400 years ago that makes this guy really good to run on the bench. Um, he's very reminiscent of Strength Kid, um, this one down here. Uh, but he's basically just designed for shooter characters. And shooters, again, they have shot up. Like I said, they are pushing and knocking on the door of top five. Definitely in my top 10 best teams. Um, so having Kid available for that team definitely helps out a lot the downside is is that dex shooters is probably a little bit better than the dex team uh sorry better than the shooter team purely because you have other additions like these types of characters up here rocking it down though at the last character we have shanks um verse shanks is very very good but in my opinion he's just not as good as this shanks here he's probably better than anyone in this echelon here but at the same time i'd probably yeah probably put him around like sort of like atlas's atlas's here um he works on Cerebral, he works on Slashes, he works on um, the Int base team, which is great because he can buff um, Dex, no, Int, Cerebral, and Slasher, which is awesome. His cooldowns is 20 seconds, which is nuts. Very, very good damage output, 5,000 fixed damage to everyone. I'm just so upset that he is Int and this guy is Strength. Like, just, if Shanks was, if this guy was a Strength Slasher and then you could use him with, like, Droy Brogy, just... Fuck, I'm still upset that he's not strength, to be honest, man. But um, he's very, very good. Uh, I just feel like nine times out of ten, you're probably going to want to run this guy over him. Um, and that's just... It's just going to be a little bit better. So it, it is what it is for my my poor old boy, Shanks. But as of the end of the One Piece Day celebration, the, the top PvP tier list, I think I'm pretty happy with this ordering here. I might actually move you down here now. S-Hawk and Roger Whitebeard have started to fall off because teams have been getting so bulky and teams have the ability to lower attack. When you can tank S-Hawk or Roger and Whitebeard and you have the ability to slow them down with characters like this, um, you can get through them actually pretty easily. And then having like this unit, it's a Roger Whitebeard kills Yamato. Yamato then just kills someone like S-Hawk. It's freaking hilarious. Um, but then like Kaido bringing bulk and stuff like that does some, some really wondrous things. So... Um, they definitely are starting to fall off. The rise of Int is very, very prominent. Um, as you guys can see here, the rise of Dex is too. Kaido is absolutely fantastic. And Ace is definitely a character that I underrated very, very heavily. But obviously, he got a resurgence with that kind of Dex team getting um, all those extra buffs with uh, the shooter meta. Zora Sanji probably just hang on in the top 10 for me. I probably would say like I could definitely interchange Shanks and um, Zora Sanji. Whether or not you have... Zora Sanji in your top 10, whether you have Shanks in your top 10. Shanks is probably more flexible, so I probably will put Shanks up there, drop Zora Sanji. Zora Sanji on the Slasher team, though, just is so, so key. Um, and then with running the Brook bench. But um, that slash, like that, that Shanks to me, just he provides so much bulk, he provides so much cooldowns, great damage output, and does some really, really fun stuff there. Cross Guild, they are 
pretty much the must bring for quick team and besides blackbeard like they're the ones that are kind of keeping it alive ironically though i have this quick team like in my like third best team in the game they just have so many good characters here that kind of tie them all together that um cross guild is that one character that just kind of rolls back so many specials and does some really really scary things roger whitebeard obviously can do a lot of damage great hp cutting great on the slasher team and then obviously great at, at buffing like these two characters here even buffing something like this guy here as well um shanks is great at buffing s hawk too makes s hawk a lot better but doesn't really affect the team that much ace's defensive drops and damage output is absolutely insane for both defensive teams and offensive teams um yamato absolutely crazy with her death shot and all the nerfing capabilities her nerfing capabilities are nuts if you get her special off and then she dies and then she goes again she does like a level 30 attack defense and speed drop it's fucking ridiculous on top of the passive of blackbeard man it's it's crazy s hawk can still bink three units he's still very very good he's on a very low cooldown works on slasher teams works on driven teams work on any teams you throw him anywhere he's gonna work well kaido is phenomenal great damage output amazing great party leader dex is very very good right now and then you have this combination of luffy still rocking the top three amazing damage output forced out is probably the best mechanic in the game the most overpowered or the strongest in my opinion blackbeard is the meta killer like he just tears through lineups and honestly if you said that he's the best pvp unit in the game i honestly would not be upset with you saying that he has caused so much ruckus in the pvp game mode that i would not be upset with saying he's top 10 but what this guy is doing is just so goddamn scary man like he he's phenomenal i will actually run him on my shooter bench and he just like absolutely destroys lineups very very crazy team and if you guys have him maxed out you guys will see the power of strength Luffy. But that's going to wrap up the video hopefully you guys enjoyed it if you did but like button hit the subscribe button do all that good stuff most importantly if you guys are in this beautiful world please make sure enjoy the rest of your day and if you'd like to build your own tier list so check this out link will be down below in the description most importantly like i said wherever you guys are in this beautiful world please make sure enjoy the rest of your day as always homies thank you all for watching and i'll catch you all in the next one